This video is designed to talk you through how a river changes downstream and some of the reasons behind those changes. First of all, it's useful for your own understanding to think of the river uh, in terms of two extremes. We know that the river at the source has a number of characteristics. Here's a picture from our fieldwork uh, from a few years ago, um, just to highlight some of the things that you can see here. Look at the width of the river, um, look at the gradient of the land uh, in the background, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a wee second. Here's the next extreme, um, this is site four in our GCSE fieldwork, and you can see how the river has changed. Um, look at the gradient of the land in the background, much flatter now, um, bigger increase in terms of width, um, and a small increase in terms of, of depth at this stage. The characteristics that you would need to be able to discuss in your exam are gradient, that basically relates to how steep uh, or flat the land is either side of the river. Width, obviously how wide the river is, depth, how deep it is. Discharge, which is the amount of water which passes a certain point in the river, um, and that relates directly to width and depth. If there's a low width and depth, discharge is low. Load relates to stones and rocks and boulders and things that are in the river, um, and again, uh, how they vary between the source and the mouth. This uh, little list here shows the characteristics at the source. So steep gradient, narrow width, shallow depth, low discharge, and that the load is large and angular. So referring back to this picture, you can see all of those characteristics here. Obviously things like load and, and that aren't as easy to see. Coming to the so down to the mouth, sorry. Um, the gradient of the land uh, becomes gentle now. So that means that the land either side of the river flattens out, uh, becomes much wider. The deep increase, or sorry, the depth increases to deep. Um, the discharge is high, and the load becomes small and smooth. And that those characteristics relate directly to this picture. So basically, uh, common exam questions will ask you to describe those characteristics. The other thing uh, that you'll have to do is explain why those characteristics occur. So there are basically two reasons that I think you need to understand for the exam. Reason number one relates to erosion. So this sort of relates to the idea that at the source, rates of erosion are low. And the reason for that is because we're so close to the source, Erosion, ha erosion hasn't had time to have a huge impact on the river. When we get to the mouth, the rates of erosion are high, and this changes the characteristics of the river and has had much more time to have an impact on those characteristics. Second explain factor that I think you need to talk about relates to the impact of tributaries. So once again, at the source, there have been a low amount of tributaries adding water to the river. This means that there are there is a low volume of water in the river, low discharge, and that means that there is a low amount of erosion. At the mouth, a high number of tributaries have added water to the river by this stage, and again that increases the amount of erosion, and then that causes the various changes that we've discussed earlier on. As is common with all these videos now, we'll look at some of the likely questions. These are two example questions uh, regularly come up. First of all, you can see here that we've got uh, study table two and figure three. This is table two, this is figure three, uh, and it relates to um, the characteristics of a river. First question says, describe how the river channel changes downstream using table two. If you want, you can pause the video at this stage, have a go at writing your own answer and then check your answers. So the command word is describe, means you've got to say what you see, and because they're talking about table two, you've got to use figures from the table. So standard answer will select distance, 0 0.30 kilometers from the source, gives you a width of 0.66 meters, and a depth of 0.7 meters, and the channel gradient has a figure of three degrees. 
9 kilometres from the source. The width of the river has increased to 8.5 metres. The depth has increased to 0.29 metres and the channel gradient has decreased to 2.5 degrees. That should be enough to get full marks in this question. At this stage it's worth pointing out we don't include any of these figures simply because they don't relate to the river channel. Only these three columns relate to the river channel and that's quite a common uh, exam question. Okay, so that's our four marks. Second question, describe and explain how the load changes with distance downstream using table two and figure three. Describe is the first command word and then explain is the second. So you've got to do two things here. Start with the describe first of all. So again, I would start by saying that at 0.3 kilometers from the source, the average size of the load is large at 21.2 centimeters. Nine kilometers from the source, it's much smaller at 2.52 centimeters. I would also use this graph to say uh, 0.3 kilometers from the source, the highest percentage uh, of load shape is very angular with 40% and angular with 80%. And I would also indicate that there are no well-rounded rocks at this stage. Nine kilometers from the source, the most commonly occurring uh, rock category is well-rounded with 60%. And I would also state that there are no very angular, angular or sub-angular rocks at this point. That's your described part of this question. The second aspect is explain and I would choose one of the uh, explanations that we talked about earlier on. In this question, it's probably appropriate to talk about erosion um, and the impact that erosion has had on those characteristics. The question doesn't really change year on year, um, but the presentation of the graph or the information or the table does. So again, here's a similar uh, set of data. This time it's been presented uh, on this type of graph, distance from the source is along the bottom, uh, average size of load uh, is up the side. So describe how load varies along the Colin River, same process as we did before, uh, one kilometer, sorry, one kilometer from the source, um, give a figure, um, and this size has decreased six kilometers from the source, and give a figure. And it might be useful to comment on the overall trend because there's a line of best fit here and this shows that there's a negative correlation between distance from the source and average load size.